Thank you very much Merci beaucoup for inviting me pour l'invitation pour conference. cette conférence And it's a importante. Very big honor for me C'est un honneur pour moi d'être aux côtés de ces experts éminents. Today, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, two parler. parts uh, of my presentation. In the first part, uh, I will review uh, the current de economic developments in uh, major countries for our discussion. And in the second part, I will talk about some uh, cross-cutting downside risk factors for the factors uh, of risk uh, so uh, as you know uh, fait, uh, and, uh, as i have uh, forecasted the global economy, economy is obviously uh, 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 recovering uh, uh, these days uh, but uh, i think the world economy is yet to uh, make a complete recovery from the 2008 global economy uh, crisis. It is still uh, suffering from a long period of weak economic activity. Uh, but uh, uh, from uh, the beginning of this year, uh, the world economy started to show some different landscapes. Let's see the US economy. The U.S. economy, I think, entered a cyclical and very new phase. Uh, you know, the U.S. Fed uh, is expected to raise its uh, policy rate once again within uh, this year, and it has already announced the uh, balance sheet normalization uh, program. Uh, it started. Uh, <laughs> from Salut. October this year. En fait, les and uh, so uh, we uh, project the US economy to grow et at 2.1% uh, in 2018. Uh, it is a little bit uh, higher level than uh, this year's growth rate. Uh, uh, the driving force of the US economy is, is uh, I think, the uh, strong pickup in uh, private consumption and investments and based on the improving labor market and weak dollar. Uh, thanks to the weak dollar, the U.S. Uh, export to the other countries has recovered uh, these days. And, however, I think there are two uh, main uh, downside risk for the United States. The first one is the policy uncertainty under the uh, Trump administration. For example, yesterday, uh, the Trump administration announced a new tax cut uh, program. Uh, if the tax cut program actually be implemented, then uh, that action uh, will uh, have some big impact on the long-term interest rate and the U.S. long-term rate. So uh, there are uh, still a lot of uncertainty surrounding the Trump administration's economic policy. This is the first uh, downside risk factor. And the second one is, the, as you know, the, the normalization of the monetary policy. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, President Trump uh, nominated uh, Jerome Powell uh, for the next Fed chair. And, and, uh, Maybe he will uh, still uh, maintain the monetary policy uh, stance uh, in the coming years, but uh, there remains still a lot of uh, uncertainty surrounding the monetary policy in the United States. And the second is the Eurozone. The Eurozone is also kicking up this year. And, uh, the inflation rate of the uh, Eurozone has moved to around 1.5%, which is a, a very closer to the 2% target. Uh, but uh, the unemployment rate is uh, still very high. It remains at 9.1% uh, in recent months, a uh, record low uh, still uh, for the last uh, eight years, though. Uh, the increase in growth in 2017 reflects an acceleration in exports uh, and a continued strength in domestic demand. 
Brexit negotiation and the second is the weak growth in real wage. The, the real wage growth is very, very weak in the European economy and that is, I think, the main barrier to the active recovery of the United and the European economies. For Japan, uh, we see a very similar economic recovery process, but uh, Japan, Japanese economy has the same problem. Very weak growth in real wage. This is a very big problem, and I think this is, uh, uh, this is the main reason why uh, we cannot anticipate the longer-term economic recovery in Japan. And for China, uh, we expect uh, still a very high level of uh, economic growth next year, 6.7%, uh, a little bit uh, lower than this year's uh, expected growth rate, 6.8%. But I think the Chinese economy is the biggest problem. Is it is kind of a bad fueled economy. Bad fueled economy. Uh, the, so uh, I think the issue should be addressed if the uh, sustainable economic growth is to be maintained for a longer time in the future. And we expect further economic recovery in some large emerging economies, especially in Russia and uh, Brazil. You know, these uh, economies have suffered from recession for the last three years due to the drastic fall in oil, gas, and other commodity uh, prices. Uh, these economies are, however, showing an upturn recently, and this trend is expected to continue in the next year. But uh, the problem in these economies is that they are too dependent on oil, gas, and other commodities. So they need to diversify the economy much stronger. I will uh, briefly mention the cross-cutting uh, potential negative factors for the global economy. Enfin, uh, the first risk, uh, uh, risk factor is, uh, 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 which is already mentioned, uh, inward-looking protectionism uh, in the fait, advanced economy. Uh, this is a very big problem for many countries. Réelle, for example, uh, for mondiale, South Korea par exemple, uh, uh, de la Corée is Sud, facing very big problem la Corée with uh, the US, problem, because the uh, US government uh, asks uh, the renegotiation uh, of the Korea-US FTA, a uh, big issue in South Korea. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we have to be careful uh, of the proliferation of the uh, not looking protectionism in diverse economies. And the second uh, risk factor is, the, uh, the, uh, as I mentioned, the very weak uh, real wage growth rate uh, in advanced economies, especially in the European countries and in Japan. It's a big problem for those two economies. And lower inflation rate is also a very big problem. Uh, a lower inflation rate tends to lead to weaker consumer confidence, weaker business confidence, and so uh, the world economy has not uh, succeeded yet in completely ending the deflation mindset, which is very, very prevalent in many of economies. And finally, uh, uh, the, I'd like to mention the changes in international financial conditions. The U.S. Fed has already begun to raise its policy rate, and there is a mood of uh, tapering in the European Central Banks. Uh, there are many emerging 
economies propelled by capital inflow from the advanced economies. That fuel emerging economies, I think, should normalize their balance sheet before a accommodative financial conditions are. And this is a very big uh, policy task for the emerging economies.